Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this video, we'll be learning some Python basics. So let's get started. So as you know, Python is a programming language and uh, out of those programming languages, we classify this as an interpreter language. This means it executes the code line by line rather than trying to look at the whole code that you have written and make it like a uh, more efficient by um, compiling it and so forth. But as it sees, as it goes through the line by line that you have written, it will execute it. Okay. Um, and the Python code that can be written uh, directly into a shell, we'll show you what shell is shortly, or store inside a file that's dedicated to Python. So the extension is .py. So like on Windows, the executable files are .exe, um, or text files are .txt, uh, things like that. So Python is a .py, okay? Um, and Python provides a Python interpreter called shell uh, for executing single Python command and displaying the results. So, so in underlying architecture, uh, this is what you see. So you have the uh, monitor and keyboard right in front of you, but inside your computer with all the your CPUs and RAMs and whatever, there is a Python engine sitting there running, uh, waiting for you to interact with it. Okay. So let's start with Python interpreter shell. So firstly, why is it called shell? Well, the shell covers a kernel and allows interacting with the user's input. And what is the kernel? Kernel is the uh, computer program at the core of computer's operating system and has complete control over everything in the system, which can you uh, access all of the software and hardware. So kernel is responsible for, uh, for example, you want to store some files onto your disk, then the kernel will look at the file, chuck it into the hardware, which means your uh, hard drive, and write it onto the things and so forth. So it's basically a, a middleman that's uh, carrying out all the tasks for you in between uh, the keyboards and what you see on the screen. Okay, so things like the, your key press that's interpreted by your keyboard that that signal is, is sent uh, wired or wirelessly to your um, motherboard. The kernel have a look at the code and uh, ex um, interpret that and chuck it back into your screen and display it as what you have, uh, what you have typed. Okay. Anyway, we're not into, we're not going to learn the systems here. Um, you will learn the systems uh, later on, but just understand that shell is the one that allow you to interact with the kernel, which has control over all of your computer. Okay. And why REPL or ripple read, evaluate, print loop? It reads the command, evaluates the command, prints the results, and loops it back to the read the command again. So basically, it's you do something, it will do the task for you and show you uh, what it has done, and then go back to the starting point where it's waiting for you to uh, input the next command. So where can we find the Python interpreter? Well, you will get to learn um, how to start the Python shell in lab one. So you will do that very shortly. Um, but basically when you install Python, um, there's two ways of accessing it. Python by default comes with um, the shell, um, which is called idle. So after you install Python and you search for Python, there should be an option showing up as Python and then bracket uh, uh, idle, I-D-L-E, okay? So if you start that, it will give you the shell to interact with, okay? Uh, uh, alternatively, if you installed Python, you can access it through your terminal or a command on Windows, okay? Uh, if you're on Mac, that's terminal, okay? And <clears throat> so that's easier to use to see. Make it bigger. Okay, here we go. Terminal. So I'm currently on Mac, but if you're on Windows, you can do CMD. Uh, when you install Python, you have to ensure that um, 
you include Python in the path environment, otherwise you will not be able to access this. So uh, in your terminal or command, just type Python 3. That's what we'll be using. Then it's going to bring up the Python shell for you like this. So currently uh, on the slide is 3.9.5. That's the uh, that shows you which version of Python you're using. On my shell, you will see it's 3.11.2. That's the, the version that I have installed uh, on my computer. OK, but uh, if you use anything above 3.9, uh, you should be fine. Uh, and now, now you see that there's three sharp brackets. That means you have access to the shell. Now we're going to try some basic math. So I'm going to stick to my terminal. Uh, here we go. So we can now type in uh, some arithmetics, right? So you can use it like calculator. One plus two and press enter. It's going to evaluate it and uh, display uh, the result and then look back to waiting for your input. Okay, hence the ripple. Okay, we can also do subtraction. Uh, you can try it yourself and you'll find that it's working perfectly fine. Uh, I will have a look at the division though. Last one is 4,000 divided by three. Uh, you can have any number of spaces. It's just going to ignore the spaces and carry out the for you. Okay, um, but we'll see uh, later because you know if you have unnecessary spaces, it's not looking nice. Uh, oh, sorry, 4,000 divided by three, but this time we're using two backslashes, right? And the results are different, right? So what is the difference between the two? Well, first one, we call it a float division. Second one is an integer division. So the output of the second one will be integer by uh, getting rid of all the decimal places at the end. So if I do something like three divided by three, uh, like five divided by three, it's 1.66. Uh, and humans are a little bit used to like rounding it up, right? So we would expect it as a two, but obviously if you do integer division, it's going to give you one because it just get rid of everything after the decimal points. Okay. So here is a, a, a list of um, arithmetic operators. There are more operators, but we'll, we'll discover them soon. Uh, and uh, the examples and the results. So you can try these by yourself by pausing the video here. Um, but, you know, these are pretty standard um, uh, arithmetic operations that you can easily find inside your calculator. Okay, so we'll go over. Ah, so before we do go over, the operator precedence uh, determines the order of evaluation and it luckily follows uh, what we are all used to, the bit mass, um, the brackets, exponent, uh, multiplication and division in the same uh, level and uh, addition and subtraction in the same level at the end. So if an equation sees um, things like four plus five times two, obviously, it's going to do the multiplication first, so that's going to be 10 plus 4 gives you 14, not 4 plus 5, 9 times 2. OK, so that's good. And if you do have um, things like, uh, what can we do? 4 minus 3 plus 2 times seven, something like this. So now we have the subtraction and addition in the same level, then it's going to do that in order. OK, so it's going to have uh, two times seven first, so it's going to give us 14 and then it's going to do four minus three plus 14 and then it's just going to calculate that in order, which in this case is 15. OK, and which is uh, what you would expect. Okay. But normally using the parentheses, the brackets, is a good idea to separate out uh, which should be calculated first to avoid ambigu uh, amb ambiguity. Okay. So now uh, let's have a look at some different example rather than um, arithmetics because we know calculators are pretty good at it uh, and we know that computers are good at it. 
Um, so let's, let's have another use case. So we mentioned that uh, Python language is quite similar to a human language. Um, but programming languages, we call the struct of uh, the components in the language different, right? So rather than calling words, uh, we have numbers, strings. Strings are a series of characters. So that you might refer as words, but actually it's a little bit more than that. We'll come to that later. Uh, and simple operators. So things like in English, can you write your phone number backwards? Then obviously humans can write out the numbers and then trace it back and write the backwards. Um, in Python, we, if you are given a phone number, we can use uh, operators or functions uh, in order to achieve that. So there's an example. Let's do that. Uh, phone number, I'm just going to use the PN equals uh, it's inside a quotation mark, so let's put it into the quotation marks. 0400400423, like this. Okay, this is good. And the things that we put inside a quotation mark is what we call strings. Okay, so anything you put inside a quotation mark will become string. This, uh, there will be more details about strings in later videos. You can have a look now if you want. Um, and then we have print phone number and some sort of bracket, uh, some dots and a minus one, right? And enter and that prints the numbers backwards from the string. OK, exactly how did that happen? You don't have to understand it now because we will cover in detail what uh, what the string, uh, what strings are supposed to be, uh, what these uh, square brackets and round brackets do and so forth, right? But this is just to show you uh, how we can easily manipulate numbers, strings, and simple operators uh, using Python. Okay. So now we can understand better about different data types. Um, so we have seen numbers and we have seen uh, strings inside uh, that that is created using some quotations mark uh, uh, quotation marks. Um, but uh, numbers, they can be divided a little bit further down, so it can be integers. Integers are whole numbers uh, from negative infinity to positive infinity, but just no decimal points. And then we have uh, float numbers, numbers with decimal points, and also complex numbers. So these, uh, so things like uh, complex mathematical equations can also be solved using Python programming. Um, okay, so here if I have some variable a equals one or uh, two, you can check what kind of data type it is by using type. Uh, actually, I don't have to use that. Type two, right? Two is a integer. Type 2.4 says it's a float, okay? And um, type five plus two j, is complex. Okay, so those can be displayed. Uh, uh, what kind of types there are? This can be quite useful later if you want to mix different types, so you have to convert them. Okay, and then we have what we call strings, which is a combination of any characters that appear on keyboard, um, like "Hello World" Nutella. So we can try type "Hello." What do you think this is going to output? That's right, an error. OK, because if you don't put it inside a quotation mark, then the Python program would think it's a existing variable. We'll learn about variables very shortly. So uh, it couldn't find it. That's that's why it's complaining. So let's retype it. Type in a quotation mark. Hello. OK, now it think it's a, a type string, so it's not complaining. Okay. And then we have the uh, Boolean type as well. Type Boolean is either true or false. That's, that's the only values th that you're going to get. So type, oops, sorry, true is a type Boolean. Type false is a type Boolean. Okay. I uh, remember that uh, true and false is written with capital T and capital F. So if you do write with a uh, lowercase t, it's going to complain. Okay, so it's case sensitive. 
Okay, and we also have more operators. Um, so these are like a condition operators. You can check um, whether it's less than or more than or so forth. Um, so we use this. Uh, do remember that um, other than the less than or more than, uh, everything else is a uh, double uh, characters. So for instance, this uh, equal is checking whether they are tr uh, the same, right? So if five equal equal three, obviously this is false, but we cannot do five equals three because a single equal sign is actually an assignment. Okay, so that's the important note that we have down here. Double equal sign checks whether the left side value is equal to the right hand side, uh, whereas a single equal sign is an assignment statement um, where the right hand side, the calculated value is going to be assigned to the left hand side. So I give you a show an example x equals five times, uh, just start with single value. So x equals five, that means x now holds the value five. Okay, so we can do x equals five times three uh, as mentioned before then if there is a calculations to do you will evaluate it first and then store it so now x is value 15. you can have the variables on the right hand side as well so x equals x plus three so previously x has been defined already so we know the value of x so we can do this uh, so x is 15 Right, so add three, we're gonna get 18. Okay. However, if you have not defined uh, the variable yet, then you cannot use it on the right hand side because you, it doesn't know the value assigned to it, so it's going to give you an error. Okay, and continuing from the example that I showed you before, variables are the ones that can temporarily or, uh, or the variables are the ones that can hold the values uh, within your program and variables you can also update the values associated with them. So this is a very useful feature where you can store some important values that you might need to use it for later calculations or you want to display it to the user. Okay. So here is a following assign. And this is an example where my age, which is the variable names that we have given, is assigned to the value 20. Okay. Okay, so what is happening uh, inside my computer when you are creating a variable? Well, if you think about computers, computers have memories, right? So when you create a variable, a variable is going to be stored inside, your, inside the program's memory area. OK, so when you first start a program uh, without anything, uh, basically your dictionary is empty. So this is your memory space. But as you create variables, uh, uh, your variables get added to the dictionary or in the memory space. We call it a dictionary because you can look it up and use that value again throughout your program. Uh, hence, it's kind of like a dictionary. OK, so when you create it, this is a, a structured uh, memory space where you can find, so hence the dictionary, but the rest of the space is uh, what we call a heap, uh, which is also a storage area for values, uh, but it's not indexed. Okay, so they have a, a reference uh, to the values, but uh, not necessarily structured, they can be like floating like this, hence that's uh, displayed like this. Um, the one that links your variable to the value is the reference uh, address to where the value is uh, created and stored. So your variable will hold the reference value to the, uh, to the value that you have created inside the memory space. Okay. And if you decide that my age equals, say, 30.30, there's going to be another box created in here with the value 30, and the arrow will no longer point to 20, but instead point to 30. Okay, so here's the uh, an example. Um, we created 
a my age which equal to 100. And then we created his age equals my age minus one. OK, at, so at this point, when this line gets executed, remember Python executes line by line. Uh, this variable gets created inside the dictionary with the reference pointing uh, to 98. Sorry, the my age started from 99. Uh, so his age is now 98. OK, because these two numbers are not the same, uh, his age cannot point to the same place, but have to point somewhere else. OK, and next line says my age equals my age plus one. So we are creating a new value by calculating 99 plus one. So 100 gets uh, stored inside the memory space. So these two are new objects that are created inside the memory. And my age is now referencing the new object instead of the old one. So my age variable can no longer point to 99, which means it doesn't have way to access 99 again. Okay, and there can be some other objects uh, stored inside. Okay, I remember Python is case sensitive, so if you have different case, it's a different variable. Okay, so we have seen the combined uh, operators. So let's have a quick uh, look again. So we have count equals one, count equals count plus one. This is a, a very um, a useful kind of a format where if you have a counter, for example, whenever you're counting uh, something, like maybe you want to count the number of odd numbers or even numbers in a, a, a list of numbers, uh, then you need to use something like this, right? Um, so we can count it like this. And if you want to double the size every time you see something or do something, uh, size equals one, size equals size times two, or the other way around is fine. Uh, obviously, this is going to um, uh, work as well. Okay, but in Python, it does provide shortcut as I briefly showed you before. So count equals count plus one. So count is two. Again, okay. if you want to go through what you have typed previously in the shell, you can just press the up arrow, you can browse through. Okay. Um, so if I keep on doing this, uh, it, the numbers keep on going up, but this has the same effect as count plus equals one. So basically, uh, in Python, uh, so you cannot do this in other languages uh, unless they have such syntax. Uh, it allows you to write uh, operations like this in a shorter way. Okay, so this is something very useful uh, later on as well. Okay, and as mentioned before, uh, you can create variables um, and give any names, but there are some uh, names that are reserved. Okay, so for example, if equals two, it's going to give you a syntax error because if is a reserved name, okay? And equals four is also reserved name. So anything that you see on this particular list is a reserved name for a particular task. Therefore, you cannot use these as your variable names. Um, and usually in your IDEs, uh, they will give you some like a cool color if it has a good uh, color schemes. OK, um, so these are the names that are reserved, but there are also built in functions uh, that gives you uh, specific um, functionalities. OK, so for example, uh, sum is going to give you a value six. It just added all the numbers inside the list, um, but these are not a reserved names. So that means I can do something like sum equals four, then sum is now four. So uh, it can no longer uh, perform the task that it used to. Okay, so in this particular session, I have overridden uh, the function sum to be now become a variable. So I can no longer use the built-in function sum. Um, but don't panic. 
if you if you have done that, you can always restart your shell. It's going to refresh uh, the whole thing for you, but it does lose all the memories of what you have done previously. So you might have to reinitiate all the variable values. Okay. So as we've seen before, the types can be uh, shown by using the built-in type function. Uh, you can also type the local function. This will show you. Oops, locals, sorry, typo. This will show you what kind of variables there are. So currently don't worry about the ones that with the double underscores, um, but we see that, here we go. So PN, phone number that we saw a few slides back, it has been defined. We created some like some random variables like A, X, count, size, and sum here. So they all get displayed here. So if you forget, uh, some variables that you have defined, you can always check uh, by using the locals built-in function. Okay. You can also convert different types uh, of, of values. So for example, obviously 3.4 is a float number, but, but you can cast it into an integer. Uh, when that happens, it's just going to lose all the decimal point values because integers cannot hold them. Uh, similarly, I can convert integers into floats. All it's going to do is insert a decimal point, which it used didn't have before. So it's just going to be point zero. But the fact that it now became a float uh, may have different usage for it. Okay. Uh, of course, you can also com convert uh, like integers or floats into a complex by casting the complex uh, function. And sometimes uh, Python will automatically convert these uh, types uh, for you. For example, if you want to uh, add values 3 plus 3.4, this is a addition between uh, integer and a float, and obviously integers cannot hold the values of floats, so it's going to convert it into a type float. So that's it uh, for this particular lecture, uh, introducing you to some basics of Python. Uh, I will see you in the other videos. Bye!